Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we are going to be going over some motion problems that do not use kinematics. Let me explain. Kinematics and motion typically go hand in hand, but the thing that separates kinematics from normal motion problems is that for kinematics your acceleration, remember acceleration is not your speed but your change in speed, like speeding up or slowing down, your acceleration has to be constant and, just as important, non-zero. So for instance, if I tell you your acceleration is constantly changing, like in other words at one point it's five, then it's six, then it's seven, you can't use kinematics for that. But equally important, you cannot use kinematics if your acceleration is zero, 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 zero the whole time. If you want to use kinematics, your acceleration has to be the same number every time, like for instance, three, 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 three at every instant in time, and it cannot be zero. Today, we're going to be talking about what you do when your acceleration is zero. When your acceleration is zero, the problem is really easy. It just means you're using this one simple equation, velocity equals distance over time. There's a bunch of different ways you can see this written out. For instance, you can say instead of v, you can say v average or average velocity. And instead of distance, you can say delta x, which is like a change in distance, over delta t, which is a change in time. But really, it's the same thing. I'm going to be using this version today because I don't really care that much which version you use. And I think this is the easiest. And one more thing before we look at these problems. What does it mean for your acceleration to be zero? Does it mean you're stopped? Does it mean, for instance, your car is stopped, you're not moving? No, not necessarily. An acceleration of zero really just means that you have a constant speed. So for instance, if you're driving down the highway at a constant speed of 30 miles per hour, your acceleration is zero. Equally true, if your velocity is zero, then you also have a constant speed as long as you're not moving. But that's kind of a boring case. We're gonna be looking at problems with constant speeds or constant velocities, like 10, 20, 30. There's really no limit to how fast you can be going except the speed of light, which would be a topic for another day. So let's look at some problems here. Let's say I have a boat in the water, and this is going to be probably the extent of my boat drawing ability. And let's make the water blue. Yep, beautiful. And as you can see here, the boat is moving forward with let's say a constant velocity of 15 meters per second. Your speed doesn't always have to be in meters per second, but I like meters per second because these are SI units, which means it is the most common unit you're gonna see in physics. Of course, you could also do miles per hour, you could do feet per second, you could even do yards per minute, whatever you want. But we'll do meters per second, and my question is, if our boat's moving at a constant speed of 15 meters per second, how long is it going to take to reach a full distance of 1,000 meters? How long will it take? Well, let's think about this. First, I would recommend using the equation, velocity equals distance over time, because like we said, constant velocity, you use this equation. And since the velocity is 15 and the distance is 1,000, this is actually just a pretty easy question. All you gotta do is multiply both sides by t, and then we divide by 15. So t equals 1,000 over 15. Let's use a calculator for this, and I'm going to get t equals 66.7 seconds. And of course, if you wanted to convert to minutes, you would just divide your answer by 60, and you would get 1.11 minutes if you wanted your answer in minutes. So that's it for that one. Now let's go ahead and look at a harder example. This question is going to use two different speeds, and we're gonna see what we do for this. So let's say you start running a mile, and you start running for the first half of the race with the speed of 10 miles per hour. But after you get to the halfway point in the race, you then slow down for the last half to only eight miles per hour. And my question is, how long does it take you to run the mile? And this is like a real question. So the first thing you need to realize is that if we're cutting the distance in half exactly, the first leg of the trip is one mile, the second leg is also one half mile. And now I gotta use that equation, V equals D over T, but I gotta use it twice because there's two different speeds going on here. I will be using this equation twice. That's how you do it, you break it up into two parts. So for the first part, my velocity is 10, 
my distance is one half and divided by time. So if I want to solve for time here, then again, I multiply both sides by t, 10t equals one half. And then I divide both sides by 10 and I plug this in my calculator, I get t equals 0 0.05. By the way, in case you're curious, how do you plug this in a calculator? First you do one half and one half is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 divided by 10 is 0 0.05. That's how I did it. And remember the units here, this is hours, which, you know, hours are fine, but I'll probably convert this to minutes later on. And now for the second leg of the trip, my velocity we said was eight, remember? So eight equals one half divided by t. Multiply both sides by t. Eight t equals one half or 0.5. And then you divide both sides by eight and you plug this in a calculator and we'll get 0 0.0625 hours. So then our final answer is just gonna be these two times added together, 0 0.05 plus 0 0.0625, and that's gonna give us a final answer of 0.1125 hours, which is perfectly fine. But let's say we want our answer in minutes. Well, all I would do is multiply by 60. And the reason why I'd multiply by 60 is because you start with this in hours, you multiply by the conversion factor, which is one hour in the denominator, and 60 minutes in the numerator. Hours cancel, and as you can see, we're multiplying by 60 here. And that will give me a final answer of 6.75 minutes. And there we go, that's how we do it. So hopefully this made sense and we got to look at some good problems here involving motion and velocity equals distance over time and constant velocity. And remember, we're not doing kinematics unless we have constant acceleration and that acceleration is non-zero, non-zero. So thank you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.